There is only one you. You are unique, one of a kind, and the Lord has given you special gifts and talents that only you can share with the world. Beautiful singer-songwriter Lee Newton came from humble beginnings. Having seen her share of hard times growing up in Canton, North Carolina, she began singing in church when she was five years old. Her love of music grew as a child when her daddy, a cab driver, played country classics like Hank Williams, Loretta Lynn, Tammy Wynette, and Patsy Cline while she rode around town with him in his taxi going on calls. Today, her soulful voice, heartfelt lyrics, and faith have touched the heart and audience across the world. And it was all in God's timing. This is her story. This is today's Nashville. This is Faith. Lee, I am so excited to sit down with you today. Welcome to today's Nashville. Thank you so much, Terry, for having me here. You know, I have been following you on social media. You're everywhere and things are just really, really happening for you. I'm telling you, God has worked so many miracles and pulled so many strings for me in these last few years. It's just unbelievable. Let me take you back to your, I want to find out more about you. Let's start from the beginning. Well, when I was a little girl, I grew up in Canton, North Carolina and uh, I was a cab driver's daughter. <laughs> My dad um, drove a, a taxi cab for Champion Cab. Um, and in a little town, it's called Paper Town, USA, uh, next to the paper mill, which is no longer there. They just shut it down. Yeah, um, but I grew up listening to country music with my dad, and that was my escape to go ride around with him uh, during the summer. And one, one, one year, I, was, I think I was about seven years old, my dad had his guitar at the cab stand, and I, I picked it up, and I started just planking around on it, you know, and, and he was like, okay, you know, I want to start teaching you how to play the guitar. So um, he started teaching me how to play the guitar, and, and he would start recording me and him singing together, you know, rolling in your sweet baby's arms and, you know, all the Hank, Hank Sr.'s um, songs and Patsy. And, and I just fell in love with it. And it was just something that bonded me and my dad together. You know, he, he passed away when I was 11. Oh, no. And so... Um, was it quick or was it true? Well, you know, when after I was born, he started having a lot of heart attacks. And, you know, he did work a lot. He worked, you know, seven days a week, months at a time. And it's kind of like my song, Carolina. That is my testimony of how my mom and dad, you know, raised me. And, you know, I, we did grow up really, really, really hard and, and poor. I mean, you know, I didn't know I was poor until I went to school and people started making fun of me. But, you know, there were many, many times as a child that we wouldn't have anything in the refrigerator except for a bottle of ketchup, you know. And I remember being a little girl going in there and squirting ketchup in my mouth, you know. That was, you know, there was, you know, my mom suffered from major depression. She had um, been an alcoholic and she got saved when she got pregnant with me. But on the other side, she, she went through a lot of depression and she would just stay in her room for days at a time. My dad would be gone working. So it was a lot of me being a little girl, fending for myself, but being a little dreamer, you know. Was it just you or did you have siblings? I have siblings, but they're older. My sister is eight years older than I am, and then my brother is 12 and then 16. So they, they were all older than me. And so it was basically me and, um, you know, my mom, when she would have her her highs. Um, she would just be a little dreamer herself, you know, and she always, one thing about it, she always took me to church. It didn't matter. We, we were in tent revivals. We were in, you know, every church service that we can be in. My mom had me there and she started getting me to sing in church when she started seeing the love that I had for music. So my mom and dad both just really encouraged you know, me being a singer and they knew that it was something that I loved so much. And so now that, you know, 
I feel really close to my dad. Every time that I sing, every time I talk to you know about him, it's got something to do with music because he gave me a, a gift that will will never go away. Yeah, you know, um, it, it, I'm sad. I, hey, I could turn on a, a song that helps soothe me. So, what about after he passed away? What were those years like? It was hard because um, my mom, like I said, she went through a lot of depression. Um, and how and old were you when he passed? I was 11. 11. 11. So that's when a little girl just, need, you know, just starting to grow up and you're just, you know, and and I didn't have anybody. You know, my, my sister, she kind of moved away and she'd never come around a lot just because the way my mom, you know, my mom was a hoarder. She, you know, I never had any, I couldn't bring anybody ever, ever over to the house. I was... Nobody, I was not popular in school at all because when you're poor and, you know, and people make fun of you, you know, you just kind of hang out by yourself. So um, it was hard. It was really hard just trying to find who I was as a person. How'd you get through it? Music. When I, when I got to um, high school, that, um, I started, I didn't make really good grades neither. <laughs> Um, but, uh, and it wasn't because I didn't try, it was just because I don't think I had that home life of somebody being there for me. And, you know, um, but yeah, when I got in high school, uh, my chorus teacher, she honed in on that. And when she picked me to sing my very first song in 10th grade in front of people uh, in, with a live band, I sang a Lori Morgan song. And I loved Lori Morgan and the Judds. Those are my yes. two big idols. And I knew right then and there, I'm like, this is what... This is what I want to do. I mean, I felt close to my dad. I felt just the energy of just adrenaline. I mean, I just loved being on stage. I loved interacting with people. And from that moment on, there was nothing else I could do professionally that I, you know, that would ever come close. So what happened after your sophomore year? I ended up quitting school when I was in when I was in 12th grade. Second month in, I quit uh, to help take care of my mom. I started, I got a job when I was 14, and I would take care of my mom. And when it come down to where I had to, it come down to working or school, I had to pick to work to take care of her. And Was she getting worse? She, you know, she, she was. Um, and she, like I said, she would have these moments to where, you know, she would go into a rage or she would, you never know what just would never know what it was going to be like. What was going on inside of you during this time, and how do you feel about all of it? You know, being a mother now, looking back, I've always tried, you know, to, to look, I always try to see the best in every situation. I've always been like that. Um, and so, uh, you know, I tried to, to, to make the best of it. I did want to get away. That's why I ended up getting married so young, <laughs> um, just to kind of get away, I think, from the whole situation. But, you know, I did start forming a relationship with my mom more in my adulthood years, um, just really trying to understand who she was as a person. And I know she had a lot of demons that she was dealing with in her past. And that just, I think it carried on into her, her, her adulthood years. And, you know, I, I respect my mom and I know that she did the best that she could with what she had. And, um, you know, you know, I, you know, I just, I really always try to help her throughout, you know, until, you know, she passed away in 2016. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I miss her a lot, you know, cause even now getting even more older, I really see a, a lot um, more that probably that was overlooked, you know, by doctors and different stuff with her that, you know, maybe they could have helped her a, a lot more. And you faced more trials, and we're going to talk about it when we come back. Lee, you told me about you getting married early. What was it like? The last several years, um, it become abusive, um, and it was really hard. And you know, um, I have little cash man. I have two older kids, but I have my little boy that's seven years old. And at, when he was four, you know, that's when I ended up having to flee from a situation that it got to where it was in front of cash. And I knew 
from that moment I, I had to get out. I had to get away. Um, I had created this world where everybody didn't even know what was going on. They just saw this smile on the outside, you know, and um, they didn't know what was going on behind closed doors. And so that day um, I ended up leaving and literally running um, with my little boy. I had no shoes on. Um, and he had no shoes on and it was morning and I ran out the door and left everything. You know, I'm look, thinking to myself, I'm like, God, you know, I know you don't want me to be in this situation and, you know, please lead me, guide me where you need me to go, you know, and in that moment, I felt a peace, even though I, he had wiped all the money out of the bank account, had nothing. I had no place to live. I was basically homeless with a little boy. And I'm like, okay, God, you, you, this is, this is, I'm, I'm following you. He sent me angels, everybody, all my friends, everybody that I had sang and posted videos to that requested songs to touch their hearts. They were coming forward and this little lady took me and cash in for a couple weeks and gave us a place to stay. And then God gave me a way to be able to get a little brick, little 400 square foot little home that didn't even have a kitchen drawer in it. But all of my friends came together and they helped me decorate it. And I had everything I needed. Cash and I never needed or wanted for, for anything. From the moment I left, God made a way. We, we, we had everything. And not only did God make a way for that, I, had, I, I became Lee Newton in that house. That house, you know, made me who I am as a person, as an artist. I started writing my songs and I started writing Strength of a Woman right during tell me that about, moment. Tell me about that. I was on my way to the lawyer's office and um, I had to come up with $5,000 for this retainer fee. Everybody come together. I was able to get enough money to get, get somebody to fight for me in cash. I'm driving to the lawyer's office, and all of a sudden, this man goes, I'm a warrior getting through this crazy life. Might get knocked down, but I got God on my side. And I'm telling you, that song wrote itself. It was God's song, not only to me, but even to this day, I get messages from men, women, that that song has helped them. So I know, and I knew from that moment on, I had to get it recorded, and God made a way for me to come to Nashville and not just get it recorded, but get it recorded right. I got to go to a nice studio, best producer, and I was able to pay them, that person back. God, God just kept making everything happen, and people good people come into my life and surrounded me and started protecting me. And I had this beautiful circle of friends. And I'm telling you, I knew that it was my mission from that moment on to start getting my songs out, that that's what God wanted me to do is tell my testimony. Cause everybody's like, Oh gosh, you gotta be quiet about that. Nobody don't need to know about all this stuff. No, they do because I've went through it and I know what that God was there. What encouragement to yeah. other women. What would you say to somebody right now who's listening that, you know, they're in an abusive relationship? Get out because it does not get any better. And when I knew that that was the only option for me to get out because I was not going to have that in front of my son, I was like, oh, what am I going to do? I, I mean, if this was during the pandemic, I had gotten laid off from my job. I had no money. <laughs> I had nothing, everything, you know, I was even trying to fight for what I had worked for, but at that time I had nothing. But find a way, there are people out there that will help you if you just got to ask, because he thought because he took that money and everything away from me that I would have to go back. But I had faith and I knew that God was going to take care of me in cash, and he did. He did. And all these years that I've, I've done music for years and years, but it took up into this moment for me just to give my, my life, my, my, my being, everything about me to God. And He made a way. And He's made that. a way for everything so far. Let's talk about your faith. Tell me when you began, you know, to grow in your faith and when you found Jesus. You know, like I said, my, my mama always took me to church. My daddy never stepped foot in the church. 
but he was a very religious man. You know, he never, he worked every day. But I remember him sitting on the edge of the bed looking out at the, the big, beautiful Baptist church. It was Calvary Baptist Church. It was on the corner of our street, it had beautiful stained glass windows. And I remember him changing the words to the Johnny Paycheck song. And instead of the outlaw's prayer, he would do the cab driver's prayer. And, you know, he'd talk about those stained glass windows and how he looked. And, you know, and you know, like I said, we didn't have much. But my mom would take me to church. And I, 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 I love Jesus from very early on in life. And I've always turned to him. Now I've strayed. Mm-hmm. I think everybody has. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, you know, you, you go down roads that you think that, hey, I know better. I'm, I, I've got this. I'm going down this way. You know, and, and God will make a way to bring you back around. You might learn a lot of stuff in between those those detours, you know, but I've always had a relationship with God, but it really, it did take that moment of, I think that's when I got the most closest and, and have been to God when all that happened and I was at my very, very lowest. And, and I hate that it took me having to go and get to that very low point for me to really completely just give everything I have to God. Sometimes He takes us there, doesn't He? He does. And you have from, to go through to get through. You do. And, and you know, and I will not be scared. I tell everybody how much I love God and how much He's done for me, how much He's done for cash. And, um, and what He can do for you. And He's taking you to big places. You're coming here to Nashville, <laughs> and we're going to talk about it when we come back. Lee, you were talking about the time where God really had you in a place a couple years ago, and you started discovering who you really were. Yes, um, in the moment, and it was like I said during the and during COVID, so it gave me a lot of extra time. Not only with Cash getting to be with him, I was just trying to find out who I was as a person. And in my songwriting is where um, that's where I started really writing a lot, and I started pulling from everything that I had went through in my past. Um, and when I started writing those songs, I would put them out on social media. And, you know, a lot of people were, that's all, you know, everybody was in social media because a lot of people wasn't going out to hear anybody. And so, you know, I think that to an advantage, you know, people started really listening more. And, um, but they started connecting to the songs I was writing. They're like, Lee, you know, you wrote so many songs that you're talking about my life, you know? And so, I mean, there's just no other feeling. You know, when you get a woman that's sending a message to you, I've had several, but one where, you know, she's had cancer and she, you know, she shows you pictures of the hair in, in her sink and she's got it to the song of your strength of a woman. And it shows her fighting back and going through chemo and her hair growing back. And she's winning this. And then there's another lady, her name's Kim. And she used my song as her testimony. And she said that song went to her and that she, um, she had to get prosthetics. She started skydiving. She's snorkeling. She is a runway model. She is jumping out of airplanes. She is writing a book. And this song, she said, it tells everything that she went through. Now, that's the power of a song. I mean, that's like, wow. And she said she listens to it every day. The Lord is doing amazing things. How did you get to Nashville and and start? Were you sending your music to? Because I know you're working with a lot of country. I know, know, it's God. It is God. I know. Tell me about that. So, um, you know, I'm very big on social media. I, I feel I'm like, wow, you know, and I've been very open. I'm very open with my life. I'm open with mine and Cash's life together. I'm open with my music. And and I'm not afraid to ask. My, it's one thing my dad always said. He said, hey, never be afraid to ask because all they can do is say no, you know. And, and I take it as a not now. If I get a no, it's a not now. Okay, it's just going to happen, but it's just not now. <laughs> but, I, you know, I just started 
plugging away. I started putting my videos out there. I started using social media as a tool. I started doing the videos and putting it out there. And it's like one connection led to another. And then I would, it's almost like they, they seen my heart. They seen how genuine I was. They seen that, you know, I wanted this so bad. And you know, it's not the fact of making it. I don't want to make it. I want to be able to share my music. You know, I do have, if there's a making it moment, that moment, I've, I've always wanted to play the Opry. Always. Well, you're that, getting ready, aren't Well, you? I'm not the, uh, the Grand Ole Opry, but I do get to play. I just found out yesterday I get to play on the Grand Ole Opry stage at the JMA Awards at the Opry House. So That's I will be able to have that moment with my dad. Because in that song, and I get to sing Carolina, which is a song about my, my mom and dad. And the very last lyric of it is, you know, tonight I'm on this Opry stage. I can almost see my daddy's face, proud of his girl from Carolina. And I finally get to say that because normally at all the places that I've been able to open up for and the people, I usually, I, I have never said the Opry stage. And that's what's actually in the song. So I'll get to say it this time. So, but you know, but God started putting people in my life. And like I said, the circle, and it's like one person led to another, you know. You're working with T. Graham Brown. We're getting ready to release an, um, a single, um, a Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Um, I've can, got. Can you sing a little bit of it? I can. Of? Let's see. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on, help me stand. I am tired, I'm weak, I'm worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Oh, take my hand, precious Lord. Lead me home. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing that with T. Graham. I mean, it's just um, this album and the gospel album, I'm telling you. Um, I knew after I released my country album, Unleashed, I told God, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a gospel album. I don't know how because I had spent everything I had on Unleashed. I don't have a manager. I, don't, I do everything on my own. I do my pictures. I do everything. My videos, everything on my own. And I'm like, okay, God, you want me to do this gospel album? I want to do it. Let's make it happen. And by gosh, he did. Larry Strickland helped produce um, so many tracks on there. Ben Isaacs is on there. Rhonda oh, Vincent is on there. Uh, Deborah Allen is on there. Oh, Joe Bonzo with the Oak Ridge Boys. All these artists came and they're like, I ask them and they're like, yes, Lee, I'll help you. I'm, I'm, I'm there. They, they are amazing, they aren't they? They are. And you know, not only did they say yes, like I have really formed some really amazing friendships with them. And we talk a lot and we, I mean, you know, just Deborah Allen is the sweetest. Oh, oh my gosh. She's and been on today's I show. love her. And she'll call me up and she'll get on the piano and play some, I mean, she just, I would have never in a million years, like sometimes it's like a surreal moment. Oh my God, I'm just this little can cab driver's daughter. <laughs> like I cannot believe, you know, I may have had Pam Tellis be on my album, Leroy Parnell. I mean, the people, so it got to open for Ronnie Millsap and I just opened for Randy Travis. I mean, but God has like put so many great people that's been willing to go out on a limb and help me. And the promoters Isn't like Brian sweet? Moore. Isn't it the is. Lord sweet? It is. He knows the desires of our hearts and he, he gives it to us. And it's, you know, you ask and I, and, and, I, and my heart's pure and it's what I, you know, I want it so bad. I just want to be able to sing. Ever since that little girl, <laughs> with the little hairbrush on my daddy's coffee table and him he named me brenda my first name is brenda so i was named after brenda lee that is on my bucket list to meet brenda lee because i was named I, after her. I, I think you probably will i hope and pray you know but i mean I, you know he's like brenda lee you're going to be on the stage at the opera one day and i'm going to be in that front row and you know what it might not be the grand old opry not now <laughs> Maybe later, but not now, but it'll be at the JMA Awards in October. I will be on the, the Opry stage and my seat that I got is in the front row. So when I'm not gonna be sitting there cause I'm gonna be performing, my daddy's gonna be in that front row. 
and he is going to be proud. He's already proud of his girl from Carolina. <laughs> Lee, you are so precious. Oh. Thank you so much Thank for you. being on today's Nashville. I know you're going to bless so many people. Thank you. My friend, have you strayed from that path? Like Lee said, God has a way of turning you around. He's standing right in front of you. Take his hand. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.